the Rockford Fosgate Stage 2 sound system for the Can-Am Maverick X3. Uh, we're gonna try to install this on the 2021. Now here's the reason why I ended up going with Stage 2 and not Stage 3, 4, or 5. The next stages start including more speakers, uh, it includes the tower speakers, it includes the amplifiers and things like that. Using this PMX2 head unit will allow me to expand uh, with my own components, whether I want to do smaller amps, bigger amps, things like that, tower speakers, if I do want to add a subwoofer or not. Um, I'm going to try to shy away from the subwoofer for now, just in order to save some weight. Um, I am, however, probably going to do tower speakers, but not the ones from Rockford Fosgate. So we're going to continue to unbox all of this, and we're going to start ripping apart the Can-Am to try to install it. First thing we're going to do is install the dash kit. And we're going to go ahead and install the PMX2. I did undo the front of my bimini top, the visor, and moved it slightly back. I also took out my windshield for now so that we could easily access all this. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start pulling panels away. One of the first thing is this fuse cover is definitely coming off because we don't need that. Next, we're pulling out these little pop rivets. All right, now that I got everything transferred over, including the module, which I'm not crazy fond about the way that it mounts, I actually emailed uh, Rockford Fosgate about the situation because it's got two mounting locations for it, and that's about it. I'll see what Rockford Fosgate says about that, um, and if they're gonna ship me a different panel. Their instruction manual here actually shows in step three to remount, to remount the factory module uh, using the four mounting holes. And they do have it pictured here, one, two, three, four, all four of them shown um, to be able to line up and mount the factory module. Now the actual panel included is slightly different. It has two mounting locations, one on top and one on the bottom and it does not exactly line up like it does on the factory one. In their instructions, and if you watch the videos online, it actually shows you to find for the wire harness, for the head unit wire harness, it tells you to go through the dash here and find this power wire. Now the power wire is actually not attached to any of these harnesses like they show in the video. The difference here is there's a similar plug right here, which you really shouldn't unplug. Underneath, underneath the center of the dash here, there's actually, there's a white little dummy clip that's attached right here. And that accessory power cable is plugged into the dummy. 
and attach to the dash. So all you have to do is unplug it from there and you have yourself the accessory wire that they are talking about. All right, so now I'm gonna run the speaker wires and I'm gonna reinstall the dash pieces here and we're gonna zip tie all the wire harnesses out of the way so nothing's rattling and we're gonna put all this bag plug in the unit bag as well. So this is my least favorite part, I gotta say. Drilling into the brand new dash. But this is only 1 8th. And I am drilling it right into the dimples. So not concerned if I ever do end up moving this unit. If I ever do end up moving this head unit, that shouldn't be an issue. Later on, I'm gonna be moving the cigarette lighter port to a different location because right now the head unit is basically gonna be covering up the charger port for me. This is the only plug you really need to plug in. And just like that, the roof is on, windshield's back in, head unit's fully installed, sand everywhere, but we're not paying attention to that. Before we fire it up, um, obviously the microphone on this camera is not gonna be able to pick up what it really sounds like, um, but we're gonna power it up, turn it on. Um, I'll walk you through a couple of things here. My biggest concern was the fitment and that is exactly the reason why I ended up going with the Rockford Fosgate uh, panels versus like the aftermarket ones. Now, if you wanna get the aftermarket, I will link everything down below in the description if you wanna buy everything separately, meaning like stage one kit or just the head unit itself um, and mount it, mount it down here because it does fit. It also fits down here but I'll link everything separately so you guys could purchase the panels if that's what you're looking for, just to add speakers. Uh, my whole goal was head units here. I have the Rockford Fosgate panels. The speakers came in as, I guess, as a bonus. They're not bad. Um, honestly, they're not bad. Um, do they need a lot of more lows? Yes, that's why, you know, further down the road, I'm gonna look into possibly doing Maybe possibly I'll be doing a subwoofer under one of the seats, but I do want to get my own uh, four channel amp to be able to run two or four tower speakers in the back. Let's power it up and see what it looks like. It does take a second for it to load. All 
right, so overall impression, the speakers are definitely, definitely loud. Obviously the windshield does help a lot because you're not just throwing the sound through wherever and having uh, some sort of a roof also helps enclose some of that sound. I would say this is a simple installation. I wouldn't say it's very easy, like for somebody that probably hasn't taken stuff apart or just kind of worried about, you know, ripping apart the whole dash and the panels and things like that on the Can-Am uh, might be a little more difficult. If you guys like the video, make sure you hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and later. Thank <laughs> you.